What's up everyone, Dr. Jacob Wilson here. Today's question of the day is, how do I know if my CNS is ready to train? Before I get into that question, which has been asked a lot, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure, make sure you hit the subscribe button now. We talk about everyday amazing things to gain muscle, lose fat, the science of what makes you a better human being every single day. So CNS, what's it stand for? Central nervous system, right? That's your brain, that's your spinal cord. Okay, and can it be tired? Yeah, it can. How do we uh, know if it's tired or not? Well, I'm gonna just, there's a lot of different ways. Two ways that I've done personal research on are perceived recovery status scale and vertical jump. When we look at perceived recovery status scale, the scale is zero to 10. 10 says I'm fully recovered, zero says I have the worst flu I've ever had in my life and I can't get out of bed, right? So. What we found, we've done research on this, where we found that when you're out of eight out of 10 and you're training hard, your gains and adaptations are much greater than if you're training at a five. In fact, if you're training at a four or five, you might be overreaching, overtraining, and you're making less gains. And in fact, you might not recover um, for a while, okay? So what this tells us that, now think about it, it's perceived, well, where's perception occur? It's in the brain. So technically we're dealing automatically, we're tapping into, the central nervous system, okay? So what I would tell you is this, if you were at, at anywhere from a nine to a 10, um, you can do your hardest training. If you wake up, I'm, I'm a nine or a 10, your hardest training session should be planned around that because your CNS is more fresh. If you are more like a seven or eight, those are your moderate training days, okay? And if you're more like a six, those are more your light training days. If you're consistently below a six, okay, or below a five particularly, there's a serious problem that you need to address instead of picking out a hard training day, a moderate training day, a light training day. If you're like that for at least a week, you need to think about your sleep, your nutrition, and you probably need to taper. What I mean by taper is basically, um, you lower your training volume anywhere from 50 to 75%. You sustain your intensity, um, and you do that probably anywhere from seven to 14 days, depending on how bad it is. Now, what's another way? Well, another way that strength coaches have been using a lot is going to be vertical jumping. Now you can make this very complex and you can calculate coefficients of variation or standard deviations. But one thing to just kind of make it simple, um, there is, there's a real good study that was done out of Dr. Lee Brown's lab in 2017. And what they basically did was they looked pe at people, they put them through a hard training session, and they looked at their vertical jump before and they looked at their vertical jump during recovery. And obviously when you train hard, do legs, back squats, cleans, all this stuff, deadlifts, your vertical jump's gonna go down after the workout. We all know that. But it's gonna recover. Well, it, rec it went down a lot, like 14% after the workout, but they trained so hard that 48 hours, it was still down by something like uh, 9%. And what they basically found was that 9%, the, the, or that was on average, but the, the percent drop in vertical jump was correlated to a decrease in back squat training volume by almost 0.7, okay? So it means close to 50% of the variation what, uh, on, on decrease in squat volume was explained by this decrease in vertical jump. We also know that vertical jump declines are correlated with decreases in EMG or muscle activity on a heavy lift. So what this is telling us is there's a relationship between, and vertical jumps really correlate it well with, with central fatigue and your output, meaning training volume, how many reps I'm getting. In this case, 80% um, over five sets on the squat, okay? So if you look at all the studies, what coaches will oftentimes do, one method is, when you feel like you're a nine or a 10 on your perceived recovery, during that time, you can get your vertical jump. Maybe you get six vertical jumps separated by a minute or two. You get the average vertical jump. When you're, when you, if you are gonna go and you're gonna do a, a heavy day, you, you, you look at your vertical jump. If it's below 3% of that average, not your best, of the average, you're probably centrally fatigued, okay? And what I can tell you is this, if you are dropped, maybe you're one or 2%, it could just be variation, below 3%, you probably shouldn't do your hardest workout on that day. 
And what maybe might happen is you could almost see that your training volume, meaning your ability to get repetitions per set over multiple sets, might be might decrease triple the decline you see in vertical jump. What I mean by that, if you decrease your vertical jump by 3%, your training volume might be down by 9% over multiple reps. If you decrease it by um, 6%, it might be down, you know, by anywhere from 12 to 18%, okay? So if you start to see that 3% threshold cross, don't do your hardest workout on the day, maybe do a moderate or a light workout, okay? So again, summarizing this up, perceived recovery status scale, zero to 10, um, if you're 9 to 10, hardest workout. If you're 7 to 8, moderate workout. If you're uh, 6 or 7, light workout. If you're below that extensively, periodize, sleep better, improve your nutrition. If you want to use vertical jump as a method, get it when you're peaked. If you fall below 3%, you need to start adjusting your training accordingly. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you next time.